Triplets are another animal when it comes to note durations. Straight, quarter, eighth, and sixteenth notes, for example, can be easily divided inside of a measure evenly, as we've learned in my previous note durations video. Triplets do not divide as evenly into a measure, at least not with the common denominator of four like the other notes we're already familiar with. That's why they have a unique feel to them, and that's why when you encounter them, it may seem like the notes are floating with the metronome as opposed to feeling connected. But the reality is, we are simply dividing the lengths of time by three instead of four, and that is what you'll want to retain from this, if nothing else. Before we start, I'd like to point out a possible misconception. A triplet is not the time signature where you count to three over and over again, like one, two, three, one, two, three. A triplet is simply not three straight note durations next to each other. What I just played with the gallop are three sixteenth notes together, and then I rested for a sixteenth note, or two sixteenth notes barred to an eighth note. Time signatures have to do with how you count in the overall feel of the music or measure. A triplet is a type of note duration you play inside of your measures, which can happen with any time signature. We are talking about note durations in this video, not time signatures. And we'll stay with the time signature of 4-4, which we covered in detail two videos ago in my Understanding Time Signatures video, where in 4-4, we continue to count to four over and over again with the metronome per measure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. My last notes duration video covered how to play straight notes within a measure, which you should watch now if we're not on the same page. And this video is about triplet note durations that we can play inside of a measure and how it changes the feel compared to straight notes. In 4-4, here is a measure of quarter notes. The measure divides evenly into four notes or sections. We count these simply saying 1, 2, 3, 4. Here is a measure of eighth notes. The measure divides evenly into eight notes or sections and we count it 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. Here is a measure of 16th notes. The measure divides evenly into 16 notes or sections. We count it as 1e e and a 2e e and a 3e e and a 4e e and a. The process could continue to 30 second notes if you wanted. In these three examples, these notes or sections in the measure are all equally divided by 4. Therefore, if you put combinations of them together, you can easily get them to equal one full measure without any trouble. Like this. I'm combining quarter, eighth, and sixteenth notes randomly and can create full measures fast. Triplets do not divide as easily into the common number of four to complete a full measure. I'm going to focus on eighth note triplets mostly, but we'll briefly cover the others as well. I will right click on the ruler in the song track and select show triplets. Notice that the measure I created with the straight note durations do not line up with the grid hash marks anymore, except sometimes on the quarter note. We can clearly see where triplets would hit inside of a measure compared to non-triplet note durations by viewing the triplet hash marks. If you're trying to figure out how to use triplets in Easy Drummer 2, you should be having a realization right now. Because here's the evidence of triplets versus straight notes in the song track ruler's hash marks. Changing the show triplets in the grid menu is very important for editing triplets in the Easy Drummer 2 song track. Now, let's cut up this MIDI block into triplets instead of straight note durations. Here's what a measure of eighth note triplets looks like. Here's what a measure of straight eighth notes looks like. Normally, there's eight eighth notes in one measure in a 4-4 time signature. Now, there are 12 eighth note triplets in a measure or bar. For every beat we count in the time signature, one, two, three, four, we want to hear three notes performed. One ta ta, two ta ta, three ta ta, four ta ta. If these were regular eighth notes, as you already understand from the previous video, we would hear two notes performed, one and two and three and four and. But now that we're dealing with triplets, things aren't so mathematically straightforward anymore. Every quarter note duration should get three notes performed to achieve eighth note triplets. And how we count triplets out loud, which really there is no standard, I even have a video posing the question, 
is up to your preference, as opposed to straight note durations that have a standard with how they're counted. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. Since we're counting in 4 4 time signature, we always want to count to 4, and then use the other syllables to represent the non quarter note durations we're counting, which was covered in my last video. My preference is counting like this. 1 a lit, 2 a lit, 3 a lit, 4 a lit, 1 a lit, 2 a lit, 3 a lit, 4 a lit. As you can hear, there are 12 syllables I'm saying per measure, each syllable representing an eighth note triplet. This is how I count eighth note triplets. You can use whatever syllables you want for eighth note triplets as long as there's 12 syllables, like one good dog, two bad cat, three good boy, four bad girl. I am done with my meal, can I have dessert now? Whatever you want. The point is you're audibly articulating that you understand how to count triplets to yourself or whom you're communicating with. One and a two and a three and a four and a is also a really common way to count. But this way shares the same syllables as straight note durations, so maybe beginners should try my preference first, one a lit, two a lit, three a lit, four a lit, to avoid possible confusion. In my advanced Easy Drummer 2 tap to find, recording, editing, and edit play style videos, I work with eight note triplets. I will use the same example real quick right now that I use in those videos. Let's hear it. Now listen to me count straight eighth notes throughout the beat. But I'll switch to counting eighth note triplets when the toms come in, and you might better hear the foundation of counting and thinking between straight and triplet note durations. I'll change my tempo to 80 first. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 a lit 4 a lit 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 a lit 4 a lit. If this doesn't feel natural to you, continue counting as I've encouraged in the past, except with triplets. Start watching the second half of my counting note durations video now if you're feeling unstable, and then come back here where you left off. Getting introduced to triplets sometimes feels like speed bumps, but when they're executed properly, they really glue a lot of creative ideas together. Counting quarter note triplets is difficult for beginners. I won't cover it in detail, but I'll put some more examples in the song track so we can compare visually. There are six quarter note triplets per measure, and they are divided evenly throughout the measure. And when you count them, you're forced to skip numbers commonly said when counting in 4-4. Here's what it looks like when I divide a measure into quarter note triplets. As you can see right out of the gate, there is no hit on the second beat, which is where we normally count the number two. Research quarter note triplets after you completely understand eighth note triplets. Metalheads might recognize their brutality from their music playlist though. They're harder to grasp because there's more space in between them. Now, going beyond the eighth note triplet, which this video has been based on, to sixteenth note triplets, I'm not gonna cover this in detail either, I'll simply say that 8th note triplets have 12 notes per measure, so a 16th note triplet has 24 hits per measure. It's an absolute ton of syllables that are required to count it properly, and you can research it on your own when you're ready. I personally, as a crutch, just count 8th note triplets with a double time feel in my head. You know what double time feel is because you watched my last note durations video. And I bet a lot of other veteran musicians count the same way as I do, but that's just an assumption. I just want to acknowledge what these three examples of triplets look like when they're divided up, and then also acknowledge how they look to the previous video's straight note durations. These are straight quarter notes, and these are quarter note triplets. These are straight eighth notes, and these are eighth note triplets. These are straight sixteenth notes, and these are sixteenth note triplets. You can't easily combine triplet note durations together to get a complete measure as easily, like I did before with the straight notes. But it is certainly possible, and soon to be intuitive as you watch this video and get some experience under your belt playing around in Easy Drummer 2. Here are two very generic examples of what we just learned. I will make a simple straight 2-4 beat, putting the snare on the 2 and 4, 
and then I'll put straight quarter note hi-hats in to remind us where we normally count quarter notes in the time signature of 4-4. The sounding of the hi-hat should help ground you through these examples and help identify what note duration we're hearing on the kick drum since the hi-hat is playing the quarter note just like a metronome normally would. If you can start identifying these rhythms in your head before you hear them, which is why you should pay close attention right now, you are going to be producing music faster than ever before and more people are going to want to work with you when they notice these articulate skills. Also, feel free not to only listen, but look at the kick drum in the MIDI blocks and compare it to our now straight eighth note hash marks in the ruler. Here we go. I'm going to paste kick drum MIDI files from my Shooty School Free Elements folder, which you can download from my website. You can see how quickly I can copy and paste beat elements from it. Now let's count the kick drums I've just pasted. One, three, one, three. These kick drums are a half note apart from each other and fall on beats one and three. Now let's hear quarter notes. This type of kick pattern is commonly known as four on the floor. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Each note is a quarter note apart from each other and land on every beat in a measure of 4-4. Four, four. We're recapping what we learned in my previous video, which you may want to check out if you're not feeling confident right now. Let's put eighth notes. Now, not only are the kick hits hitting on the beat, but evenly in between each beat as well, giving us eight hits per measure. But since we're in the time signature of 4-4, as explained in my Understanding Time Signatures video, we'll add the syllable and in between the numbers to represent the extra beats we hear and count. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... And lastly, for our straight note durations, the 16th note. Now we have four kicks per beat, and add the correct syllables to count them in 4-4. Four, four. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a... Those were all straight note durations we just covered. Now we add the eighth note triplet, which will seem faster than an eighth note, but slower than a 16th note. And if you remember, we had just learned how to count these a few minutes ago. One a lit, two a lit, three a lit, four a lit, one a lit, two a lit, three a lit, four a lit. This whole time, the hi-hat and snare never changed. And as we change the note durations of the kick drum, we can start to memorize and someday feel what different note durations sound like or feel like. And hopefully in the near future, you will know and be able to identify these note durations in your head before your instrument is even in your hands. You will start maturing as a musician big time when you achieve this. A quick recap and something you may want to do on your own time, we're hearing eighth note triplets. Get them in your head and keep them there for a second. Now let's hear straight sixteenths. Now, eighth note triplets. Now, straight eighths. Now, quarter notes. Now, eighth notes. Now, eighth note triplets. Now, sixteenth notes. And back to eighth note triplets one more time. You can really hear a contrast when we skim through them this fast. If you don't know this stuff, consider practicing on your own, just as I have right now. Also, take a closer look at my free elements MIDI for other note durations and files to play with and get some experience with triplet durations in your beats. Now, if you're watching this video for fun, great. Thank you for stopping by, and I hope my take on triplets was sensible to you. But if you're still trying to grasp note durations, 
counting and perceiving triplets, before you return to Easy Drummer 2 to just try and figure it out, visit my intro to counting video first and just confirm that you can count this stuff out loud and in your head. You may need to only watch this video once or maybe you need to start watching it every single day until you get it. So go there now. A lot of people don't really consider whether they're playing triplets or not until they have to document, communicate, or record their song that happens to have them. At that point, if you do not figure out and acknowledge triplets, you're going to waste a lot of time on trial and error. I will close this video with helping you identify triplets in the real world, because here we're only learning the academics. And as you may know, knowledge is lacking without experience. When hearing music or trying to write the music that's inside your head, identifying triplets is very valuable to compose quickly. And the better you get at it, you will start to feel triplets instead of counting them. And you will start getting your ideas out instantly. Let's try to identify the kick drum notes in this beat and see if we can spot the pesky triplets. This is how you may want to start approaching figuring out ideas you're trying to write or transcribe. If I count quarter notes, I notice that there is a hit on every quarter note. Now, that third kick drum beat has an extra note after it. Let's count eighth notes and see if it lines up. One and two and three and four and... Yes, the and of three lined up perfectly. So the third beat has eighth notes. And since we can hear three quick notes in the fourth beat, those must be our triplets. So let's confirm. One no lit, two a lit, three yo lit, four a lit, one no lit, two a lit, three yo lit, four a lit, one no lit, two a lit, three yo lit, four a lit, one no lit, two a lit, three yo lit, four a lit. That actually doesn't lock in with my counting like I need it to. That sounds awful. It's a good thing that I've practiced counting eighth note triplets so well that when I count them over straight sixteenth notes, I can tell the difference. This example may have been a trick question, but I want to drive a point home that a lot of people think that just because they hear three notes next to each other means they're a triplet. They are not. What we're hearing are either two sixteenth notes and an eighth note next to each other, or three sixteenth notes with a sixteenth note rest after it, depending on your situation. Let me count this kick drum for you throughout. One, two, three, and four, e and one, two, three, and four, e and one, two, three, and four, e and. Eighth note triplets on the fourth beat would sound like this. First we hear three straight sixteenth notes, and at the end, three eighth note triplets. Listen to that completely different non-straight feel at the end of the second measure. One, two, three, and four, e and one, two, three, and four, a lit. It has tension as opposed to fluidity. When listening or writing music, try to identify these feelings. And when they start becoming second nature, you will start becoming a Jedi Master. In closing, I did not cover the shuffle feel. You should know that a lot of shuffle feels are compromised of triplets. In this case, you just exclude a few eighth note triplets and you have a generic shuffle quickly like this. We can go down a whole new rabbit hole on creating shuffles. This is just one way to do it. In closing, you may have been writing your music inside of a square until this point. Understanding triplets might put you in a hexagon. And when you acknowledge creative shapes, you can shift back and forth at will. 
and your composing and communication will prosper. And as you strive to become advanced with Easy Drummer 2, quantizing, editing, and writing will all start to make perfect sense, making you a much more professional musician, songwriter, or music producer. Triplets can create tension when using them with straight note durations, or when the whole band jumps on them together, they can broadcast a great, powerful statement. Triplets can be a spice added to the wrong dish, though. Don't just use them because you're aware of them. Use them because they're making your music sound better. Good luck on your endeavors, and pursue learning triplets until you feel them internally with your spiritual inner clock. Translate this music theory into a reflex of your creative soul. You will thank me in the future if you pursue this as I've encouraged. If you learned something today, please like and subscribe. Any comments are important to me, so I know people are getting something out of these videos. And of course, corrections are welcome as well. Rewatch these videos or count with me in my intro to counting video if you're not understanding time signatures, straight or triplet note durations. And when you have this stuff under your belt, come back to me and we'll continue learning Easy Drummer 2 at an advanced level. This is Sean from Shooty School. Rock on.